Shalom. First and foremost, I'm going to start off by giving all praises to the Heavenly Father, Yahweh, Bahasham, Yahweh Shai, Bahasham, Rechah Kodash. Double honors to the apostles and elders at Great Millstone who rule well. And as always, we give peace and salutations unto the elect, the house of David, all right, as well as the large multitude, the rest of the men, women, and children whom the Lord will have mercy on at the time that he sends his only begotten son. All right, the name of the Most High, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is Yahweh Bahashem in the name of Yahweh Shah, the name of the only begotten Son of the Most High, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ, our mediator and high priest, which will bring us into the second covenant. All right. Bahashem in the name of Rahakwadash, which is the Holy Spirit sent from on high, so that we can turn back to the Father in these latter days through the sacrifice made by Yahweh Shai. All right and be brought back to the most high okay through this wisdom all right which is why you see all of these israelite camps and all of these people okay coming back to the understanding that they are israelites based upon truth and sincerity now i wanted to touch on the image of the beast again uh to drive a few points home uh as you uh brothers and sisters see yesterday i did a video um in response to the elder um, Barack Abar video and uh, I wanted to uh, go again today into the you know same topic but touch on a few different points and bring it home so that you can all see and understand fully the image of the beast because these guys in these other camps who are against the mark of the beast being the RFID microchip are teaching you that the mark of the beast is sin, which the scriptures say all, okay? As a matter of fact, let's get that. Romans 3 and 23, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, so this would mean all have received the mark of the beast, which when you read Revelation, the 14th chapter, if you take the mark of the beast, all right, then there's destruction, all right? There's no such thing as repenting from the mark of the beast you're just doomed okay and while that sounds you know uh crazy because this devil has so much power and you're looking around at the circumstances and you're asking how can we get out of this a lot of them are stating that you know when we were born all of us got chipped as well which that's not true all right as the scriptures say the elect have victory over the beast, over his image, and over his mark, his name, and everything that he's coming with. All right. And as the Lord stated in Romans the 11th chapter, okay, Romans the 11th chapter, in the fourth verse, but what saith the answer of God unto him? I have reserved unto myself 7,000 men. Who have not bowed the knee to the image of Baal. And this is the servants, the prophets who would be sent. Okay. To preach victory over these things. And to ultimately have the 100% truth. Which is the pure doctrine. All right. As the scriptures say in Revelation. The 12th chapter. We overcame this devil. By the blood of Yahweh And by the words of our testimony. And we love not our lives unto the death. So there is a doctrine, okay, through the spirit of Yahweh Bashim Yahashah sent directly from the heavens, okay, that will lead to a victory over this devil under the blood of Yahweh Shai, okay? And there are a complete number of men who have that doctrine, all right? The name of Yahweh is sealed in their foreheads, okay? And they're going to reign with the Messiah in the kingdom of heaven on earth as kings and priests all right some of those very men who are of that number which is the 144,000 are on the earth today all right and when you read revelation the 14th chapter it likens their doctrine okay the everlasting gospel okay in which there would be no imperfections in their doctrine it likens it unto a new song and when you go into the understanding of what this new song speaks of one of the main things in it, all right, is warning, all right, our people, if you worship this beast and his image, and if you receive his mark, 
Okay, you're going to be destroyed. Okay, so, so this is why you constantly see us, Lord willing, we're of that number, harp on these things. Because that is a part of the new song. Prophecy being fulfilled. All right, which these men, which the Lord said, 7,000. We know that 7,000 or seven is uh, ultimately completion. All right, and we know the complete number of men who are going to rule under Yahawashai is 144,000, which is the tabernacle of David. Some of these very men are on the earth right now preaching this gospel, the everlasting gospel. Okay? So this is why we continuously harp on these things. It's not out of self-glorification. It's not out of having a personal agenda against Zabak or against, you know, these particular camps. It's because it's in us. All right? It's in us. Now, what I wanted to speak on today is the image of the beast a little more than I spoke on it yesterday. And I don't want to take too much of your time. But um, what we're going to do is uh, ultimately uh, I'll start here. This is a video that I, I've uh, been reloading over the years. Um, it's called America is Rome all over again. It's a short documentary. And I'm going to go ahead and play some of it because the system that you're living in, okay, uh, is Rome. This is the revival of the Roman Empire. All right. Even the Capitol building, Apostle Gabar did a video this morning. Let me see if I can find that video. Give me one second. Here it is. Uh, this is off of uh, Apostle Gabar's second page, Daily Edification, Daily Exhortation to Banyamyan. Make sure you subscribe and constantly be edified daily. <laughs> when, the, when, the, when it says daily edification, <laughs> it's literal, all right? So when you look at this video, um, and I won't play it, uh, make sure you go look at it. It's called Capitol Hill and its connection to ancient Rome. Now, you know we just had that so-called storm on the Capitol building, all right? But when you look at the significance of that Capitol building and what it means, and what it's tied to, it goes back to Capitoline Hill, all right? As he typed in Capitol Hill in ancient Rome, it says, The hill and the temple of Jupiter became the symbols of Rome, the capital of the world, okay? The temple of Saturn was built at the foot of Capitoline Hill in the western end of the Forum Romanum. See? So it's back here today, all right, in spirit, in the form of the Capitol building, which has that ancient Roman architect, all right, which also has the architecture, all right, of Petra, all right, who was in, uh, inhabited by Edomites. Okay? As a matter of fact, when you look up Petra, which was inhabited by Edomites, you can see clearly that same Roman architect. See? Let's look up the Roman capital buildings and how they had their buildings. See? It's in Rome. All right, and then you have the U.S. Capitol building. Let's see if we can make that a little bigger. Either way it goes, you can see it. Zoom in. You can clearly see it, you know, showing you that, you know, the, the Edomites aren't done away with. The Romans were Edomites, all right, and Edomites rule this current Roman system, all right, which the Capitol Hill is just one of many examples of the image of the beast, all right, both speaking and living in this time, okay? Now, real quick. As a matter of fact, we'll start here in Daniel because Daniel speaks of the fourth beast. Okay. Remember when you uh, read Daniel, the seventh chapter, it gives you the understanding on the four major empires that will be used and raised up by the most high. All right. Through a son, of course, within this whole story to rule, you know. And to scatter the Israelites at the end of the day and to ultimately, you know, 
reign within the Lord's story. All right. You have the fourth beast here in Daniel, the seventh chapter, which is the Roman Empire. All right. Now, when you read about it, Daniel seven and seven. And after this, I saw in the night visions and behold, a fourth beast, dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly. And it had great iron teeth, their military. OK. It devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it. All right. Who ruled before them? The Greeks, which were, which were also Edomites. OK. It was the Greco-Roman Empire. But Rome, OK, had the bigger portion and was more dominant. The beast system starts with the Greeks. OK. And it ends with Rome. All right. And that revival of the Roman Empire. We'll get to that in just a minute. It says, and it was diverse from all the beasts that were uh, before it, and it had ten horns, all right? Now, how was it diverse? Because of the way that they brought their emperors and rulers in. It was through a senate, through a vote, whereas the, the empires before that, you know, the throne was passed down from a father to a son, all right? And it had ten horns, which the ten horns represents the vassal states, all right, the lesser powers that all give their power to the beast, okay, which was Rome, to formulate the beast system, which you have today fulfilled in America, the NATO, and the EU. All right, in particular, the EU would be the uh, the ten horns. Now, in this time, back then, you had the Visigoths, the Goths, the Vandals, the Suevis, and so forth. All right, it says. Verse 8, and I considered the horns, and I beheld there came up among them another little horn. All right, another little horn. This is speaking of America, the revival of that Roman Empire, which was revived from that Renaissance period. From that Renaissance period unto America, all right, re revive that Roman image, that Roman way. And we'll get to it in just a minute form whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots all right and those three horns represents the uh the, the the spanish the french and the british out of the british came what the 13 colonies which ultimately started babylon the great okay which is america then later on the eu uh, uh nato and so forth made the beast system which we live in today OK, now and behold, there were in this horn eyes like in the eyes of a man and a mouth speaking great things. All right. The, the, the represents, you know, how they're just men, but they pride themselves on being the most high or above the most high. But they're just men and they speak great things, their science, their philosophy, their wine. Uh, as the scriptures say in um, Second Thessalonians 2. They oppose and exalt themselves above all that is called God or that is worshipped. See, now, when you go to Revelation, the 13th chapter, this same sentiment, okay, is rehashed by John the Revelator. Okay, let's go to Revelation, the 13th chapter. Okay, you see, it says, I saw another little horn. All right. Which ironically, through this horn, through this little horn rule comes judgment, comes the Lord setting up the kingdom of heaven, which fulfills the book of Obadiah. Just want to make these quick points before I get this video. Which fulfills. All right. Obadiah one and twenty one and Savior shall come up and judge the mount shall come up on Mount Zion to judge the Mount of Esau and the kingdom shall be Yahweh's. See, showing you that this fourth beast and the last heathen rule would be by Edomites. Esau is the end of the world. Because when you read Daniel the seventh chapter, after this fourth beast comes judgment, comes the son of man. Okay. And the kingdom of heaven being set up. You see, so we're right at that point. Now, the point I wanted to, to harp on is this little horn that came up among that fourth beast. All right. Because remember, according to prophecy. All right. 
the the uh, the the verse three in Revelation uh, thirteen, and I saw one of his heads that was as it were wounded to death, meaning that Roman Empire fell at one point, all right, for a period of a thousand years. But then you had what the deadly wound was healed, and all of the beasts, all right, the world wandered after the beast. That was the Renaissance period, and eventually, what came? Revelation thirteen and eleven. And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth. See, that's that little horn spoken of in Daniel, the seventh chapter. And he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. OK, and let's read this closely. We would love priest Zabak to break these scriptures down and go into the image and all of these things and break it down because the image can't just be white Jesus. That doesn't make sense. It's far more complex than that. The most high ain't that basic, man. Revelation 13 and 12. And he exercised all the power of the first beast before him, okay, which was the ancient Roman Empire, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. So you're in that Roman system all over again, and they're going to cause you to worship that image all right, through this system, and you'll, you'll see. And he do it great wonders so that he make it fire come down from heaven. All right, and that was when NATO struck, all right, on Bosnia, then Kosovo. Then eventually down the line, you had Nagasaki, Hiroshima, and people were like, these people are God. This is it. You see, he was blessed with a whole hell of a lot of power, technology, and he had his blessing as the fatness of the earth, and he would rule with the sword, which is what Isaac gave him. See? So people, you know, once once NATO was formed, all of that, they, they were like, oh, hell, this is it. No one would dare come against Babylon the Great. Okay? And it says, and deceiveth them that dwell on the earth by means of those miracles, his technology, and everything he's blessed with on the left-hand side, which he had power to do in the sight of the beast. All right, which gave him control of the earth. You see, if you uh, read uh, uh, Second Edges, the eleventh chapter, what it tells you is that this fourth beast. All right, as a matter of fact, let's pull that up real quick. So this is Second Edges eleven, and I'll start here at verse thirty-seven. It says, "And I beheld, and lo, as it were a roaring lion, which that Shahawashai chased out of the wood." And I saw that he sent out a man's voice unto the eagle and said, okay, so this is Yahweh Shai cursing out the eagle, the lion cursing out the eagle. Now, who's the eagle synonymous with? Esau. All right. And it just so happens that the Romans, I mean, well, the, well, the Greeks, they took to the eagle as a symbol of their rulership and kingdom. All right. Rome took on the uh, the uh, eagle as their symbol, all right? Even at the time of the Renaissance, they took upon the eagle, all right? The French, the Spanish, okay, the British, even Hitler, they all used the eagle because that is tied to Esau, Edom, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, all right? And we know that the lion is Yahawashai, speaking through the prophets, the voice of the Lord is the prophets. So what is he saying unto this eagle? All right. And what are we saying unto the eagle? <laughs> Hear thou, I will talk with thee. Come here, eagle. And the highest shall say unto thee, Art not thou it that remainest of the four beasts? All right. Now, Daniel, in Daniel the seventh chapter, what did he see? He saw four beasts. Okay. Four great beasts, which is four empires, rulerships. See, this is how you cut all of the madness that these Christians are talking about, that everybody's, you go to prophecy. According to prophecy, that fourth beast being destroyed is how the kingdom of heaven will be set up. But not only that fourth beast, that little horn that will come from it, okay, as in uh, Revelation, the 17th chapter, the eighth, which is of the seven. All right, but we'll get to that at another time. Going back to 2nd Edris, 
Okay. What is this lion saying to this eagle? Are not thou it that remainest of the four beasts whom I have made to reign in my world? See, this is the most high's world. And he set it up for the purpose, all right, of his chosen people, the sons of God, headed by the son of God. All right, which Adam failed, but under the second Adam will be perfected, okay, and reign in righteousness forever and ever and ever, man. You see, whom I have made to reign in my world, that the end of their times might come through them. So the end is going to come through who, according to the scriptures, Esau. Esau is the end of the world. Okay, that fourth beast in Daniel the seventh chapter and that little horn that came from it were the end of the world where the kingdom would be set up. And the fourth came and overcame all the beasts that were passed and had power over the world with great fearfulness and over the whole compass of the earth with much, which, with much wicked oppression and so long, long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit. All right, so the whole compass of the earth, which is the fulfillment of Esau's blessing of the fatness of the earth. The whole compass of the earth is north, south, east, west. This beast system and its policy pretty much runs the whole world. Although he doesn't have a full grip, the full grip will be under Jacob's rule. But he is, he controls the resources. All right, but even within that, he's in straits. All right, because this rulership would not be a perfect rulership. It would be a wicked rulership. Per all right, perfectness, all right, or perfection, I should say, rather, only can come through righteousness. All right, so he would have control over the whole compass of the earth with much wicked oppression outside of Captain Tazariak, of course. <laughs> He's not oppressed. And so long time dwelt he upon the earth with deceit and then it gives you the characteristics of what they would do they would not judge with truth they would destroy afflict the meek hurt the peaceable they would love liars destroy the dwellings of them that brought forth fruit you know including black wall street <laughs> you know they came over here took america all right broke covenants and treaties they took down you know uh israel okay but it says in verse 43 and they took down all nations, which when you get Revelation, the 13th chapter, ironically. Revelation 13 and 7 from that Renaissance period on, he went through the earth just conquering, man. Revelation 13 and 7, and it was given unto him to make war with the saints, which are the Israelites, and to overcome them. And power was given him over all kindreds and tongues and nations. You see, and all that dwell upon the earth shall worship him. They love this devil whose names are not written in the book of life of the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All right. And then John the Revelator throws in a, 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 some hope for us. If any man have ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here's the patient and the faith of the saints, meaning he's not going to get away. It's beautiful how John just threw that in there. But how is he not going to get away? Okay, because eventually the Lord will raise up America. All right, that another beast coming out of the earth, which is that little horn spoken of in Daniel, the seventh chapter. And through that, okay, thy wrongful dealing will come up to the highest and thy pride. Okay, and, 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 and eventually... You're going to be burned. The end of your pride and everything and your rulers and your, your wickedness. Okay. Uh, it's going to be all burnt up. There's going to be no more eagle. No more of the eagle's wings as rulers as Caesars and everything else. Okay. So that what? The earth may be refreshed. and may be returned being delivered from thy violence. Because through this rulership, the earth was destroyed. Now. When you go back here to uh, Revelation 13, real quick, as we were uh, here in verse 14, what does it say? And he deceiveth them that dwell upon the earth by means of those miracles which he had power to do in the sight of the beast, 
all right because the lord gave him power he had a grip over the whole earth saying to them that dwell on the earth that they should make an image to the beast which had the wound by a sword and did live that's the ancient roman empire you're going to bow to that system when it's rome do as the romans do and you can see this sentiment being put into the earth all right there as they continue with their quest for world domination the more you speak righteousness the more you will be deemed an enemy of the empire which happened to our forefathers in ancient rome if you're speaking of another lord or a god outside of them coming to reign and and, and yahweh shine the messiah ultimately you'll be deemed an enemy of the state and they'll pass legislation to behead you and kill you or murder you okay now verse 15 and this is the point where i'll get the documentary it says and he had power to give life unto the image of the beast that the image of the beast should both speak all right and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed okay so the image of the beast is not just white jesus now white jesus christianity satanism science the senate voting is all a part of that image which when you get revelation the 20th chapter we showed you guess i gotta do it again Do it again got to drive this point home revelation 20 and 4 and i'll just jump to the point i'll just read it and i saw the thrones and they that set up on them and judgment was given unto them and i saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of yahweh shai okay so that very prophecy that we're reading in revelation 13 of if you don't worship or bow to this man's way you're going to be beheaded. It's going to be fulfilled in some of the, the, the men of the Lord who are preaching this word. You see? For the witness of Yahawashai, which the testimony that we have is going to be a part of overcoming this devil. That's why they're coming after this gospel, man. And for the word of God, okay, in which had not worshipped the beast, Neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. So what Zabak is teaching, because a brother came onto the comment board and said he saw recently was Zabak. Well, I've, I've saw him say this before. Well, the image is just fulfilled in white Jesus. <laughs> All right. Serapis Christus says, says Raborgia, which came about that image around the 1400s along with the renaissance so it's a part of the image of the beast it's the part of what they use to promote themselves and exalt themselves but it is not the mark the mark deals with buying and selling the image as we read in revelation the 13th chapter deals with worship so you're telling me that john the revelator only saw people worshiping white jesus as he saw this beast system rise to the top all right, and, and, and currently come to the point where they're going to cause all to receive this mark. No, that's a part of it, you see. But if you look closely, Christianity has ran its course. This beast system is no longer speaking about white Jesus and, and, and being a Christian. It's worked its purpose to get people, all right, the, the, the mass majority of the people, mainly you Israelites, under a delusion when it comes to the Bible and to work witchcraft and to, 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 to send evil spirits and work pedophilia all throughout the earth. That's a part of it. That's a part of the image. But how can just the, the, the image of white Jesus be the image? Remember, this image brought to life a system that fell by a sword and did live. Okay? So, let's show you how the image of the beast, all right, how this system 
this new Rome, which is America, this little horn gave life because remember the system died for a period, but then through a Renaissance rebirth, which is that little season all the way up to this point, starting around the 13, 1400s, all the way until this point is where this devil had power to go throughout the four corners of the earth and spread his lies and work his wickedness. All right. And take down the saints and all of the nations at the end of the day. But the saints are the main ones who he, he, he harmed and injured. Over 2,700 years ago. Let me start it over. Rome, the eternal city. It was founded over 2,700 years ago by twin brothers Romulus and Remus. For centuries, the people and emperors of Rome ruled the known world. Now you see that was the rulership of the ancient Roman Empire. They ruled the known world, right? But see, at the end, they would rule what? The whole compass of the earth, which fulfills Isaac's blessing to Esau. As a matter of fact, I want to pull it up here because I want to get... I'm going to show you something real quick. Genesis chapter 27 and. All right, because Jacob was blessed. This is this was uh, Esau's blessing. Genesis 27 and 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, behold, thy dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth. Meaning he would have control over the resources, the oil. OK. In a dew of heaven from above, okay, he would be blessed, okay. And by thy sword shalt thou live, all right, <laughs> and thou shalt serve thy brother. And it shall come to pass, when thou shalt have the dominion, thou shalt break his his yoke from off thy neck. Now that happened under King David, okay, when King David ruled over the Edomites and in in, in the Moabites and you know the throne of David was established but eventually that would be broken up and Esau would be able to wiggle around and then you know after that you know thousand year period where his ass was uh you know persona non grata the renaissance came okay and he was able to pretty much from that point do what he would have the dominion now when you look up this word dominion Shout out to the Elder Ariella for this plug. Rawad means to wander restlessly, to roam, okay? And we know that this man neither keepeth at home. And then Revelation 20 also gives us some insight on that saying what? Revelation 20 and 7, and when a thousand years are expired, Satan, it's not the spiritual demon Satan, the seed of Satan, he whose coming is after the working of Satan shall be loosed out of his prison and shall have the dominion and shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four quarters of the earth. Which is how he would gain power over the compass of the earth through his sword and through his lies, which are part of his sword. His tongue is a sword, which is going to lead to Gog and Magog to gather them together. World War Three, Armageddon. So he's just about at the end of his blessing. So what was it? It would be based upon deceiving the nations in the four quarters of the earth. Which is what Isaac blessed him with. So going back here, you see the, 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 the territory of the ancient Roman Empire. Okay. But once that deadly wound was healed. And then that little horn grew America. Now they have the fatness. They have everything pretty much. Just wanted to show you that. Through war and conquest, they dominated the entire Mediterranean and controlled. They dominated through war and conquest. Let's, let's, let's go back. 700 years ago by twin brothers Romulus and Remus. For centuries, the people and emperors of Rome ruled the known world. Through war and conquest, mm. they dominated the entire Mediterranean and controlled a territory which spanned three continents. 
did not Daniel tell you that the fourth beast would break in pieces these different nations and take everybody down? It was home to legendary figures like Julius Caesar and Augustus, but also to crazed emperors Nero and Caligula. Rome's hit. Which, when you go to the, even the calendar, uh, uh, Julius is July, Augustus is August. So there's Rome built all into this system. This is how the, the image of the beast is living. History is a violent one. It was a civilization founded on bloodshed and lust, and would eventually destroy itself in the same manner. What is that all Rome had to offer? Typical perceptions of Rome include constant gladiator games, wine field orgies, and prosperity among all. But these are all dramatized visions of a glorious culture that was far more similar to our own than. You see that? It was far more similar to our own. Orgies, gladiator games, Olympics, <laughs> but anyway. It was different. Their influence and contributions can be felt even today by examining the history and culture of ancient Rome. See that? We're able to see that not all of Rome died in its collapse. Not all of Rome died in its collapse. Why? Because there would be a system in the latter days that would give life unto the image of the beast, which is far more complex than some goddamn seizure Borgier, man. You brothers need to wake the hell up. Look at all of these temples and how it, it's synonymous with the same stuff that we have here in America. In this beast system. surrounded by common symbols which owe their meaning and lasting appeal to the Romans. Hmm. For instance, the great seal of the United States shows an eagle clutching arrows in one leg and an olive branch in the other. Imagery such as this is usually interpreted as uniquely American. The eagle, however, was not always a symbol for American nationalism. In Roman mythology, the eagle was the companion of the chief god Jupiter, and it was used widely throughout Rome adorning statues and temples. Let's get uh, the book of Obadiah. The book of Obadiah tells Esau, Obadiah 1 and 4, though thou exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. So Esau's tied to that eagle. And this is not the only way. All right. Just to show you that this is because you have the fourth beast. Well, who runs that daughter of Babylon? So another thing, this is also Babylon, the great. Because what nation has to fall in order for the kingdom of heaven to be set up? In Revelation, Babylon. So Babylon would have to be this fourth beast and the little horn that came forth from it. This little horn has to be Babylon and it has to be ran by Esau. So for anybody talking about Japheth, show me and link Japheth to that fourth beast. Show me where Japheth could be linked to this little horn. Show me Japheth being linked to the daughter of Babylon. We can link Esau to the daughter of Babylon. Psalms 137. See, this is how you devils are going to pay. This is why John the Revelator said, If any man have an ear, he that leadeth into captivity shall go into captivity. How? Through this, this, this little horn that would raise up and do all of this wickedness and exercise all the power of the ancient Roman Empire 
with more power, more technology, more military, more room and, and toys to play with. And it all started with that Renaissance period. The deadly wound was healed because remember the Roman Empire fell, which was why there was a need. Okay, when you when you go into this fourth beast, why there was a need. All right, for another little horn to come up from it, which is to bring back that energy and power. See, and that's fulfilled in Babylon, the great. Its religious associations would have been widely known throughout the Roman world. It was also used by the military, which carried standards with the bird of Jupiter mounted on top. The eagle. In recent history, others have used the eagle to create a memorable link with the ancient past. Napoleon Bonaparte's Grand Army used it to decorate their standards, banners, and uniforms. It was also incorporated into the emblem of the consulate after Napoleon declared himself first consul, a title also derived from ancient Rome. During World War II, the Nazis held party rallies and demonstrations while carrying Roman standards, which were topped with the eagle. See that? So the scriptures is missing no punches <laughs> when it likens you Edomites to the eagle. And that system being the system that's going to be destroyed in the ushering in of the kingdom of heaven. So in, in, pretty much anyone who, who tells you that Japheth is the, the, the current nation ruling the earth, just ask them, are we at the end? Well, yeah. Well, Esau would have to be ruling. See, Esau is heavily linked to Enton's prophecy, not Japheth. Link Japheth to the eagle. See, you, you all don't understand that Esau conquered those lands where Japheth originally dwelt. But that's all right, man. <laughs> you all gonna get it in the in the in the in the world to come if you don't get it now. At the same time, fascist dictator Benito Mussolini, who envisioned Italy becoming a new Rome, also used ancient Roman symbols, including the Fasces. It was a tool carried by Roman civil servants known as lictors in order to preserve the peace or hand out punishment. Even the word fascism is derived from the ancient Roman tool. It also appears in numerous forms throughout the United States, representing strength or justice. The olive branch was also used in everyday life by the Romans. Olives were a precious commodity in the ancient world, despite the amount of labor required to produce them. Extending an olive branch to an enemy, therefore, became known as a symbol offering peace, as they could only be grown during peacetime. The olive branch appears on the official seal of the president, which has been in use since 1880, hmm. and on the United Nations flag. In the mid-first century BC, Julius Caesar replaced the old Roman calendar, which had 355 days, with a new one, reorganized with 365 days, with one leap year every four years. The renovated Julian calendar is essentially identical to the calendar system used today. Mm. Originally, the older style calendar put the beginning of the new year in March, at the start of spring. Julius Caesar had the new year coincide with the 1st of January. Most of the names for the months are derived from the original. And this is the system that we're living in. This is the image speaking and living. Let's read it again. Revelation 13 and 11. I beheld another beast coming out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb and he spake as a dragon. All right. His policy and his lies and his deception leads to him passing draconian laws. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causes the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed, which is the ancient Roman Empire. You see, then it goes into his miracles and everything else. But you've become accustomed to this way of life. You think that this is the end all be all. You 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 track time how they track time. You think of, of love how that's where romance comes from, Rome. Everything that you think is, is reality is based upon Esau. See? 
This is how the image, let's look up the word image, because he had power to give life to the image of the beast. It's far more complex than Caesar Borgia, man. The word for image, a con, image, figure, likeness. All right, the image of the things, heavenly things used in the moral likeness of renewed men to God. Image of the sun, yada, 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 the image of one, okay, and one in whom the likeness of anyone is seen. And we can see the likeness of ancient Rome in this very system we live in. All you got to do is go to a Colosseum. See? It's from a co to be like, simple. <laughs> To be like, all right, to yield. Roman names as well. January from Janus, god of doorways and beginnings. February is derived from the Roman festival of Februa. March is the month of Mars, the god of war. April comes from the Roman month Aprilis. May for the Roman Maya, goddess of spring. June is named after the queen of the gods, Juno. July gets its name from Julius Caesar, mm -hmm. who rededicated the month after himself. August was renamed in the same fashion after Augustus, first emperor of Rome. And September, October, November, and December simply mean the 7th, 8th, 9th, and 10th month. Certain religious festivals from ancient Rome were... Now, what did Daniel say about this fourth beast? Because he goes further into what this fourth beast would do. All right. As a matter of fact, <laughs> I'll start at 21, then I'll jump. It says, Daniel 7 and 21. Man. And I beheld the same horn, which made war with the saints and prevailed against them. This explains why they've been able to uh, do what they've done. All right. And overcome us. <laughs> This all can't be explained by carnal means. You have to go into the scriptures. You know, why was this weakling able to overcome us? Prophecy. All right. Until the ancient of days came and judgment was given to the saints of the most high. And the time came that the saints possessed the kingdom. All right. Thus, he said, the fourth beast shall be the fourth kingdom upon earth, which shall be diverse from all kingdom and shall devour the whole earth and shall tread it down and break it in pieces. OK. And then it goes into the 10 kings, which are ultimately the uh, the vassal states. But verse 25 says what? And he shall speak great words against the most high. OK. In the revival of it, man. OK. Verse 24, and the ten horns out of his kingdom are ten kings that shall arise, and, an, and another shall arise after them, and he shall be diverse from the first, and shall subdue three kings. That's Babylon the Great. All right, you have the revolutionary wars, all right, between the French, the Spanish, and the British. Out of the British came what? Babylon the Great. All right, the 13 colonies. Okay? Which the British, you know, ultimately still have rule. All right, over the over over America, but America has become a superpower, which fulfilled life being given to the image of the beast. Okay, it was through this system, Babylon the Great. And what did it do? It shall speak great words against the Most High, and shall wear out the saints of the Most High, and think to change times through his calendars, his daylight savings, and they shall be in laws. And they shall be given unto his hand until a time and a time and a dividing of times. But the judgment shall sit and they shall take away his dominion and to consume it unto the end. And this is what's getting ready to happen. Replaced with Christian holidays as paganism declined under alternate names. but was And they made these, these so-called Christian holidays laws. See? It was a law to rebel against the Heavenly Father, man. 10th month. 
Certain religious festivals from ancient Rome were replaced with Christian holidays as paganism declined under alternate names but with similar meaning. A Roman festival known as Lupercalia celebrated fertility and health. It was held February 15th and is the modern equivalent of St. Valentine's Day. Often used as a symbol for the modern holiday is the chubby winged child known as Cupid, which was the Roman god of erotic love. In December, Romans would honor the god Saturn during the week-long celebration of Saturnalia. This was held at the end of the month and is believed to be the basis for celebrating Christmas okay. during this time. That's it. Which just all goes back to Babylon. Okay. Because where did Rome borrow their gods from? All right. Sumeria, which is, you know, Syria, Babylon, you know, Egypt and so forth. You know, that's why this is the spiritual Sodom in Egypt. One of Rome's often forgotten but inescapable contributions is their language. Although it is not spoken directly, the majority of words in the English language, at least 60% and probably higher, are derived from Latin. Yep. Many common names such as Marcus or Julia are Latin words. Even the name America is taken from a Latinized version of Amerigo. And when you read the New Testament, you'll notice a lot of the believers had all right, these Greco-Roman names, okay? As he said, Marcus, you, you read about a Marcus in the New Testament. You read about a Jason, which in the uh, Greek, all right, means healer. That's a Greek name. In the Hebrew, is Josiah, all right? But you can very well see how the image of the beast is speaking, and it's far more interesting and complex than just saying, that's Caesar Borgia, that's the white Jesus. That's all the image of the beast. That's what people. Be Come on, man. Y'all are too big and old for that whack ass breakdown. Grow the hell up. It's time for you men to stop being so damn proud or not. Because that's what it's all technically is just pride, man. And Sadnetter even sees that y'all breakdown is off. <laughs> you know? The person it was named for. Other languages spoken around the world also developed from Latin. They are known collectively as the Romance languages. The main ones include Spanish, Portuguese, French, and Italian. Including English-speaking countries, it's estimated that over one billion people today speak a language which traces its roots to Latin. Another important contribution from ancient Rome in use today is their alphabet. Numerous writing systems around the world, English included, base their alphabet on the Latin characters. See, Rome was more than just Rome. It was an idea. It was a way. Just as America is an idea in a way. Look at how many countries, okay, worldwide, from east, north, south, you know, west, all of that, have traces of the ancient Roman Empire in their culture. You see that? Far more deeper than Caesar Borgia. With the exception of J, U, and W, the capital letters of the English alphabet are identical. Besides the basis for languages, Latin is also used in the Linnaeus taxonomy system, developed by Carl Linnaeus in the eight. And Linnaeus, he's one of the devils that is responsible for this whole black, white, you know, the, 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 the races that you know, the nations on the earth being coded under pseudo names. You can look that up. It's another one as well, but he, he's one of them. Linnaeus. 18th century to classify and arrange organisms. Thanks to Linnaeus and Latin, humans are scientifically classified as Homo sapiens. See that? Many legal terms in use today, such as habeas corpus, in absentia, stare decisis, and others, are taken directly from Latin. Roman law. At the heart of Rome was its government. During the Republic era, a code of laws known as the Twelve Tables were created, which protected the rights of all citizens. Roman law would eventually spread and become the foundation. Give me one second. Nation for numerous law systems throughout the world. 
because of the 6th century Emperor Justinian, who collected all works of law and assembled them in a single doctrine, Roman law was preserved until modern day. In one form or another, it was the basis for most of the European law systems until the end of the 18th century, and even the English common law, which helped influence the U.S. Constitution, borrowed from the ancient laws of Rome. Whoa, so the U.S. Constitution is borrowed from ancient Rome, putting more emphasis on the right breakdown that the image of the beast speaking and living is through the ways of the system. Got that, Jack? And we ain't coming in pride. We're just showing you that this is it. <laughs> this is it. You know? He exercised all the power of the first beast. All right? He had life. He had power to give life unto the image of the beast. All right? That the image of the beast should both speak and cause as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. Okay? If you if you speak in righteousness, you make yourself a prey in this system. And, and, and as they pass draconian laws more and more and more, Okay, you're going to see, and Maxine is a part of all of that. Maxine is a part of the image. Because as we showed you yesterday, with the Renaissance came a revival of Edomite medicine and those Greco-Roman ways of healing. Look up the medical Renaissance as well as the Renaissance, which ironically started around the 1400s when the Renaissance which is fulfilled here in Revelation 13 and 3, which began his little season to go do all of this wickedness, which would be finished through Babylon the Great. So we almost home, man. Anyway, hopefully this is making sense. Even in America, founding fathers like Thomas Jefferson and John Adams hung on every word of Roman writers like Sallust, Tacitus, and Cicero. Considering every care. And this guy, Tacitus, we see Edomites love, you know, to, to, you know, bring this guy up. But don't you know he wrote about Yahawashai and the, 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 his followers, you know, mocking them, calling them idol worshipers. But he spoke on them. You see? In his writings. Right? Because he's a historian, right? A Roman historian, when you look him up, he spoke, which which gives proof to the existence of Yahawashai and the disciples. Anyway. Tacitus and Cicero, considering every character they wrote were studied. George Washington was considered the Cincinnatus of America for his reluctance to hold power and his patriotism for his country. Because of this, many statues were created with Washington dressed in Roman-style clothing. Hmm. Oh, man. There's more. Architecture. Oh, man. Many of the buildings of ancient Rome have been lost to time, but we're left with a small piece of their majesty. One of the most influential pieces we have is the Pantheon, a temple which was dedicated to all the gods. Its design, which is quite different than other... Doesn't this look like your everyday courthouse in America? Now all around the world? The world, due to its square column front and large dome interior, has been replicated in almost every state capitol building in America, including the capitol in Wisconsin. Hmm. <laughs> Trajan was centuries ahead of his time when he built what is considered the first multi-story shopping mall. It was equipped... Shopping malls. Go back to Rome. Now, can you see how the image of the beast is living and speaking through this system? With the ancient equivalent of all the stores we might find in a modern mall. Sports fans as well owe some debt to the Romans for their architectural endeavors. Modern stadiums 
which itself is a Latin word, are modeled after amphitheaters, a must in any great Roman town. The most famous of them is undoubtedly the Colosseum. Romans also loved going to the races at the Circus Maximus, a large oval track used for chariot racing. The Romans, like audiences today, enjoyed a good spectacle, often betting on their favorite gladiator or charioteer. There were also inventions like the hypocaust system, which circulated warm air through chambers beneath flooring. It was especially useful in bathhouses where heated floors were a necessity. This subfloor heating is similar to a system in homes today, centuries after it was first conceived. Concrete bridges go back to Rome. You see that today. It's a lot. It's a lot more, you know. The fall of Rome. The empire eventually came to an end, destroyed by barbarians. Ancient Rome exists now only in its legacy. You see that? Going into prophecy that what? One of his heads were wounded unto death. All right? Which was Rome. Okay? Which the seven heads that you read about up here all right, Greek, Rome, um, Germania Major, Germania Minor, the French, the Spanish, the British, which is the seventh. But as we read in Revelation, the 17th chapter. And I'm not going to go too deep into it. Because this is where Esau's whole beast system is founded upon. Okay. Yep. Revelation 17 and 11. And the beast that was and is not. Even he is the eighth. And is of the seventh. See he's of the seven. But it's another little horn that comes out. Alright. He's of the seven. And go it into perdition, which is going to be the destruction that comes to Babylon the Great. You see? So as this narrator is talking about the fall of the Roman Empire, it fell, but the deadly wound was healed, starting with that Renaissance period, which led up to this very system we have before us today. So Rome may have died physically but spiritually it lives on through this system as the saying goes not only do all roads lead to rome but most of our culture does as well the people of rome were very similar to the people of the world today they worked the land loved to be entertained and were extremely resourceful and creative the people in the cities created a melting pot of ethnicities each contributing a bit of their heritage to the roman way of life See that uh, ethnic pot of, of ethnicities, which when you look up Babylon the Great, believe uh, <laughs> Yep, as Jeremiah even describes, because when Jeremiah wrote this letter to the captives at Babylon sent by Sariah, all right. Um, he was writing about this Babylon, so that this these letters, you know, Jeremiah 50 and 51, some of 49, I believe as well, were actually written unto us here in this Babylon, because it's not speaking of ancient Babylon. But what does he say? Jeremiah 50 and 37, a sword is upon their horses and upon their chariots, and upon all the mingled people that are in the midst of her. They shall become as a woman, a sword is upon her treasures, and they should be robbed. This is what's getting ready to happen to Babylon the Great. Because the Heavenly Father is getting ready to use a company of nations to destroy this place. But it's being destroyed from the inside out. You know? One could argue that without Rome, our world today could never exist. And that's true. Without Rome, this world cannot exist because this is Rome. Okay, it's it's founded upon those same principles, and this is how the image. This is the image. We just looked at it. 
So as you go here to Revelation 13 and 15, now we understand clearly how this system, this little, this this beast, all right, that came out of the sea, which is that little horn. We see now how it gave life unto the image of the beast. All right, that the image of the beast should both speak and call as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And that's happening. This is as draconian laws. All right. Are passed more and more. The people who oppose. All right. Maxine, the medical, you know, the, the, the stuff that they're going to try to do. They're going to be killed, you know, but the water, that a remnant is preserved. OK, even of that remnant, some of us are going to be beheaded. All right. But it doesn't matter. We have to do what we have to do in order for this story to be fulfilled, because as the Lord has awakened through waking us up. As the scriptures say, in uh, let's get real quick. My Internet is tripping. Let's get um, Psalm 73. <clears throat> Psalm 73 and 20 as a dream when one awaketh so O Lord when thou awakest and how is the Lord awakened in the earth through his prophets going out and declaring his name and his son's name all right thou shalt despise their image see you see and now that the Heavenly Father is against this way. So there's two opposing doctrines. You have this doctrine of Yahweh Bashim Shai, and you have the doctrine of the left hand, all right, through Satan. And that's being presented through the Edomites, who all of these different nations are adjoined to them. Okay? And also, when you get Habakkuk, the second chapter, I'm not going to go into it, but as Habakkuk is asking, how are you going to end this all? All of this injustice, he's basically letting them know, I'm going to end it through the Edomites in the latter days. Then he describes what they would do. He describes the image of the beast in this chapter as well. You know, idol worship, you know, lying to people, playing on their, their, their nakedness, you know, the calling idols to awake through their technology and everything. Okay. So right now. There's a shameful spewing upon the image of you Edomites. Where is that at? I know it's somewhere. <clears throat> yep. Habakkuk 2 and 16. 144. Call hello, Yahweh, Bashim Yashai. Thou art filled with shame for glory because the Lord truly despises your image. Drink thou also, and let thy foreskin be uncovered. The cup of Yahweh's right hand, which is Yahweh's shot, shall be turned unto thee, and shameful spewing shall be on thy glory. See? For the violence of Lebanon, all right, or Lebanon, shall cover thee, all right? And Lebanon was pretty much where Solomon got the wood primarily to build the temple, Okay? So that's symbolic of his violence on the Lord's temple, man. Okay? Shame is going to cover you for that. And for the spoil of beast, which made them afraid. Is that not clearly what this whole system is based upon? Destroying animals, destroying our earth, destroying the Israelites. Because of men's blood and the violence of the land and of the city therein. What profit the graven image that the maker thereof have graven it? The molten image and the teacher of lies that the maker of the work trusted therein to make dumb idols. You see that? And is that not what John the Revelator saw these dummies do in the last days? Now you have the image of the beast, but then they're going to come with an idol, which that's what this mark is. And say that through this mark, you're going to have everlasting life and be brought back. From all of the hell that they created. But I'm going to stop there. Um, more to come. But clearly we see a separation. From the image and the mark. 
which this is what the Bible is talking about, all right? Yep, Revelation 14 and 9, and the third angel followed them. This angels, these angels are speaking through the elect, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast and his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, shows you that the image and the mark are separate. Now, Prezabak, challenge to you, HOI, or anyone who has, because Rap the News, uh, Mark Ass, came onto the uh, comment board, Spewing madness. Let me see if I can go to his comment. <laughs> rap the news. Let's, let's, let's listen to rap the news as a uh, rhetoric, because he he wiggles around our pages, you know. RT and that's rap the news. A video I did yesterday. He said. He said the white. That's not off. I mean, it's a box not going off. The mark of the beast. Let's see if I can zoom in on that. The the white man system is the mark of the beast. Everything within the white man system is the mark of the beast. We can't pick and choose which evil, which is evil and which isn't. All of it is evil, but the mark directly deals with buying and selling. Now, ironically, this dude for for a long time has mocked the New Testament. Now, all of a sudden. He's a he's a a scholar on the New Testament. The vaccine is the mark of the beast. Don't get it. See, the RFID chip is the mark of the beast. Don't get it. Money, everything that pertaining to us going to the white man to live is the mark of the beast. So that means we should all be destroyed. Because we all use money. Well, I use a credit card. You're using his system. So what is the solution? We got to be independent from the entire damn system to the best of our ability until the most high. So what, what are we going to do? Create our own currency and, 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 and buy and sell that way? Money and everything, <laughs> it says, uh, so what's the solution? We got to be independent from the entire damn system to the best of our ability until the most high completely re removes the white man from rulership. All this talk about Jacob's trouble, we've been in Jacob's trouble for generations now. We at the end of Jacob's trouble, right? So how is it going to be ended? Through us being delivered out of it, nigga. Yes, we're in Jacob's trouble, but Jacob's trouble is going to take a more drastic turn. You think in, 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 in the severe Jacob's trouble, you're going to be able to be on a video typing and, 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 and us loading videos up to YouTube? No, by that point, it's going to be a severe form of Jacob's trouble. Let's talk about the white man's trouble, which is what we do. Let's talk about the end of his rulership and the beginning of ours. That's what we do. Let's talk about how all the nations on the earth against Israel either go into captivity or destruction. We always do that. <laughs> so it's like damned if we do and damned if we don't. No weapon, nor nuclear missiles, no vaccine, RFID chip, or weapons will prosper against the elect see that not all israel get that through your head no weapon will prosper so he's just cursing me out no weapon will prosper against the elect but we still have to go out and warn what do you think is being said here through the 144,000? if any man worships the beast or his image this is what's going to happen to you The devil's plan will fail. A lot of y'all niggas should stay away from reading the New Testament because y'all don't understand what y'all are reading. The Bible is a library of, in a figurative sense. The New Testament has a lot of important information, but y'all don't know how to properly read those books. We got to get out of Babylon, literally and figuratively, as much as possible. And he's saying some right things, but what, what, what's your problem? You see, months ago and years ago, Rap the News didn't even believe in the new testament he mocked everything this a lie that's a lie you know anything that led towards the messiah this is a lie but see his ass is on the sideline watching and now he's trying to change you see you niggas ain't ain't, ain't slick but anyway i'm gonna just leave that alone on to the next one lord willing if we get you know to uh some more on this topic it'll come later shalom
gotta roll.